I stood face to face to the giant electronic box, which contained to what I knew to be an, an intercom microphone. But before I go on from there, let's take back, let's go back to when I was 10 years old in 1999 at Spenway Elementary School. I was always quiet, I kept to myself. Why would I like, go through all the agony, the frustration, and the pain of trying to get words out as, I would, as it would take me like minutes to get out a single sentence? Do, do any of you ever remember a time like, like, like when you read out loud in class and you had reading time? I used to dread those times. I, I, I would sit in the class as we watched, as, we, as they went like row by row, and, and my palms would, would, would get sweaty, and my heart would start pounding as, as my turn approached. And I would get, I would come to one of the most difficult words, the. And I felt like Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber, as like, like Harry had to help him along and said, yeah, the word's the, and he's like, or whatever he said. <laughs> yeah. And after struggling through that, like with the uncertainty of whether I would get through the paragraph, I would just continue on. And I attempted to work with a speech therapist, and she had me try to slow down and read with more of a rhythm, but it didn't really seem to work in the other tactics she tried. And but getting back to the to the large electronic box, I'm not sure exactly where the motivation of drive came from. Someone encouraged me, but they were looking for candidates to run for the class president, and I elected myself to do that. And little did I know, I, was, I had to write and give a speech in front of the whole entire school over the, over the, over the, the intercom. Yeah, so that was pretty nerve-wracking. That, and I flashed back on, on times like when like, the previous candidates um, gave, gave their speech. They, they, they were so eloquent. Uh, they they uh, did it with, with uh, such eloquence. And, um, and ease, and that didn't encourage me very much. <clears throat> so the time came when we walked into the office, and there was the big electronic box with all these buttons and stuff that I didn't really understand, but I knew that that middle part was, and if you spoke into that middle part, then the whole entire school could hear you. And, I, and it was like, it was like the reading experience, except on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, wa I uh, watched as the kids, in uh, front of me went up and gave their speeches with such ease. And then my turn came up and I, I walked up to the electronic box and I had a choice. I could either like cower and walk away from it or I could go through and, and just try my best. And so I walked up to it and, and read my speech. It, and if you've seen King's speech, it was kind of like that, like before he had all this training. <laughs> um, and afterwards, somebody came up to me and said, Marvin, were you okay? It sounded like you were crying or something. It's like, yeah, I was okay. It was just struggling. But, yeah, um, but life is like a conveyor belt in reverse. Because if you cower in fear and never take the next step, you'll move back on the belt automatically. But if you, and if you do the bare minimum to just get by, meaning you take one step forward and you hesitate, and you slide right back. You take one step forward, and you hesitate, and you slide right back. But if you have more determined, a more, de more determination, more will, and go through the resistance, regardless of the fear of like what somebody else would think, the fear of of the uncertainty, and you and you can power yourself to go from point A to point B. One of my first speeches, I gave, I talked about Sapere Vidira, and Sapere means to know. And videre means to see. So sapere videre is to know how to see. And more specifically is to know how to see what is not already there. And I came across this story that instantly reminded me of sapere videre. And, 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 and I got pretty excited about it. But it's, it's a story about a young prince. He was approaching his 12th, his 12th birthday. And his king, which was his father, asked him, what he wanted for his birthday, and the, and, the, and the son replied, I want a statue of myself, and I want it placed outside my window in the garden where I can see it every single morning. But his father was confused. He thought, why would my son want a statue? You see, his son was born a hunchback, so he, had, he was hunched over all the time, and, and his father looked at his son at where he currently was, and he 
couldn't perceive why his son would want a statue of himself and look at that all the, all the time. And then he tried to convince his son to not, uh, to, uh, not want that desire, to not want that wish. But then his son uh, replied, no, I don't want a statue of myself as I am now. I want a statue of myself as I could become, of, of myself standing up straight with great posture. So, so his father granted him the wish. And for eight years, every single day, uh, multiple times, the young prince stood next to the statue with his four-foot uh, structure, and he, and he stretched with all his might to try to mimic the statue in uh, every single morning but without fail. And by his 21st birthday, he was no longer a hunchback. He stood up straight with his head up high, um, uh, looking up through uh, eye to eye to, to all who he came in contact with. And it was all because of he didn't see himself as he was, but he saw himself as he could become. We too can do what, or how do you uh, perceive yourself though? Like, we too, just like the young prince, we can mentally picture in our mind a statue of the person that we want to become. And as we walk up to that electronic box, which could be like a job interview, it could be a new business venture, or trying to forgive somebody, a family member or a friend. And with that new focus of ourselves and our abilities, we can power through and do things that we didn't think we could, uh, we could possibly do before. And we can, and, and truly, we can really surprise ourselves as, because life is a conveyor belt in reverse. If we uh, cower in fear uh, and never take the next step, we move backwards on the belt automatically. And if we do the bare minimum to just get by, you know, one step forward, um, one step forward, we'll slide right back. One step forward, hesitate, and we slide right back. But if we power through a great determination, we, then we are in a guard of the resistance, we can certainly do more than we can ever imagine. Thank you.